CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Consider, if you will, the earthworm one of the lowliest of creatures. If you're an average person, you probably never have thought about an earthworm at all, except perhaps as bait for a fish hook or breakfast for a robin. And yet, our lives would be impossible without him or her. Or do earthworms have sex? See, we're not even sure. But unless you had earthworms constantly, ceaselessly boring their holes in the ground, it would be virtually impossible for things to grow. Why, then, are not earthworms hailed and honored by all mankind? Well, whoever said you always get what you deserve in this world? I love you, darling. And I've never loved anyone as much as I love you. I'm so happy. I only hope you're as happy as I am. Are you really happy? Yeah. That doesn't sound very enthusiastic. Darling, I'm... I'm happy, except, uh... What is it, darling? Well, I, uh... I have these... terrible dreams. Dreams? Yeah. Dreams. In which I... keep killing you. mystery drama, The Aurora Group, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Larry Haynes. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and General Electric. I'll be back shortly with Act One. All cats are gray in the dark. So are most people. Gray. Most people are very much like most other people. Work, eat, sleep, have a little fun, or have no fun at all. Get married, have children, get old, die. What a world, huh? Is this what it's all about? Here's a young fellow, maybe 30 or so, works as an office manager. Names Zachary Taylor Everhart. Quiet, industrious. You couldn't say a word against him. He has a nice, quiet wife. They live in a nice, quiet apartment. They lead a nice, quiet life. Now, if you think this story is going to be a little bit too nice and quiet for you, wait. That you, Zach? Yeah, I'm home. Oh, how did it go at the office? Hey, you're wearing the new suit. Yeah, yeah. I was leaving the office. The store called, said it was ready to pick up. Hey, it looks great. Well, that's when I decided to wear it home. What did you do with the old one? Oh, I just left it there. Couldn't stand the sight of it anymore. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm glad. I hope you remember to transfer everything out of the pocket. Hey, 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 now listen. I'm the one with the memory in this house. Hmm. Well, I'm short of change. I need another quarter for the milk machine. Oh, really? I don't think I have any. Oh, look in your pocket. Well, I, I couldn't have any change, darling. I remember. I, I, uh... Well, wait. I do. Here's a quarter. <laughs> you see? That's all I have. That's enough. I'll be back in a couple of seconds. Okay. Hey, don't drape that new jacket over the chair. Hang it in the closet. Now, start treating that new suit right. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey, how long till dinner? Oh, half an hour. Okay, I'm gonna sit down, close my eyes, relax for a few minutes. Oh, I had a rough day. Well, it wasn't all peaches and cream around here. Uh, look, better not fall asleep. You'll wrinkle those new trousers. Yeah, okay, I won't. <sighs> that was the day it began. That was the day of discovery. That was the day that changed my life. Just an ordinary day, a routine day. She went to the milk machine in the hallway of our apartment building as she had done so many times, countless times in the past. And it was by a fluke, the merest chance that... Well, anyhow, she was back in less than a minute. Zach! Huh? What's the matter, Amber? 
You seen how to milk? Jack, I, I was about to put this quarter you just gave me into the machine when I... I... Well? Look at it. Well, is it counterfeit? I don't know. Well, Emma, it's just a quarter. What's the problem? Look at it. Well, it looks okay. Closely. The date. What about the date? Well, what does it say? Oh, come on, Emma. Read the date. Uh, 1986, okay? No, it is not okay. Why not? How can it say 1986? Well, it does, very clearly. And that's not peculiar. Well, why should it be peculiar? Hey, wait a minute. Yes, wait a minute. Well, that... Oh, that's that's got to be a mistake. Do they make mistakes like that? Well, I don't know. It's just an ordinary U.S. quarter, except for the date. Why does it say 1986? I can't understand that. After all, it's not going to be 1986 for a long time yet. I just don't understand. I can't figure it out. Can you remember where you got it? Uh, no, no. Well, think. You had to pick up change somewhere today. No, I didn't. I, I can remember... All the money I handled, I had four quarters. Well, was this one of them? No, 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 and I'll tell you why. I uh, I spent two of them on the bus this morning, uh -huh. the other two on the bus tonight. And those four quarters were all the change I had. Well, during the day? Uh, coffee break, it was Johnson's Treat. Lunch, I ate at the counter, came uh, to a buck sixty, and I left two dollar bills. Well, you had to pick it up somewhere. Well, but darling, I had no other change. I know it. Don't you remember when I came home, you asked me if I had a quarter. I said no. And then I, I found this in my pocket. Maybe it was in the suit when you got it. No, no, no. It couldn't have been. Well, how can you be sure? Well, I uh, I took it out of the jacket pocket. And the pocket was still sewed up. The tailor had to slit it open. It was empty. Oh. Then how did the quarter get in there? Well, I'm, I'm sure there's got to be an explanation. Well, it's kind of scary. Why? Well, you're holding a coin there that... that got a date almost ten years away. Yeah. Suppose that coin was really minted in 1986. Now, Charlie, how is that possible? It won't be 1986 for at well, least... I, I didn't ask you if it was possible. I asked you, suppose it was. No, Emma, it wasn't. It couldn't be. It's impossible. Now, why don't we forget it? Forget it. Okay. How do you forget a thing like that? And there's just no way to explain it. After a couple of days, I think she forgot about it. I mean, she got all excited over it in the beginning, but that's Emma. After a while, other things come up. And she just goes on to something else. But it kept bothering me. So one day, on my lunch hour, I noticed this little shop. R.V. Zoltan. Coins. Yes? Uh, sir, I, uh, I have this coin here. I'd, I'd like you to look at it. Yes? Well? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. This is a Washington 25-cent piece. They were first struck in, uh, 1932, the bicentennial of Washington's birth. The obverse is the face of George Washington. Yes, I know that. The reverse... Is the spread eagle? Yes, yes, yes. But tell me. Originally and until 1963, they were made of silver. Yeah, what I want to know, sir. Is... No. However, they consist of a copper silver alloy. Yeah. Well, is it counterfeit? Hmm. Oh no, no, never. This is from the uh, Ben Vermint. I can tell. But uh, the date. What about the date? Well, read it. I read it. That's all you can say. What do you want me to say? This coin was minted in 1986. How can you say it was minted in 1986? Yes, interesting point. Should I say, it will be minted in 1986, but it exists. Well, well could there have been a, a mistake at the mint? No, no, no. Why not? We would know about it. Well, then what are you telling me? I'm telling you, you have a coin from 1986. Well, how is that possible? That is not my field. Possibilities. I am an expert only in numismatics. Now then, I, uh... 
I suppose you wish to know the value of this 25-cent fee? Well, I, uh, I would imagine it would be worth uh... a uh, fortune. I'm sorry. Right now, all I could offer is the face value less 20%, which is my normal commission. But a coin from the future? A coin from the future is worthless. Only a coin from the past. But, but any... sir... You see, value is based on rarity. Since I do not know how many 25-cent pieces will be struck in 1986, I cannot assign any true worth to... But it to would this... seem to me that... The... How did you happen to come into possession... I, uh, I don't know. Forgive me. I have no right to ask that question. Unless, of course, you wish to sell it. Sell it? Well, isn't that why you came in here? Well, well, I, uh... I'm sorry. You thought it might be worth a fortune. If only you know how many bubbles it is my misfortune to burst. He said more. A great deal more. But I wasn't listening. Where did that quarter come from? How did it get into my pocket? I felt completely up against a wall because there was no place to go. Nobody to ask. If it was something in my mind, I could see a doctor, a psychiatrist. But here was the quarter. The quarter from almost ten years in the future. The physical, actual quarter. Who could get around that? How could I get around that? And then, when I got home, another problem. Zach! Huh? What is it? Didn't you check through that new suit when you got it? Well, sure. No, you didn't. I was hanging it away for you when I noticed a stain on the sleeve. Look! Oh. Oh, that's right. Oh. Oh. You let them sell you a suit with a stain on it. Well, darling, I didn't notice any stain. That's because you never looked. Emma, Emma, this is the first time I ever spent so much money on a suit. You can bet I looked. Well, meanwhile, the stain is here. Well, I got off the bus, I went into the store, I put on the suit, and I walked home. It's only three blocks. There's no way for that stain to get on there. When I got home, I changed clothes before dinner. Well, are you going to let them get away with it? Get away with what? People can do anything to you. And you just take it. Now, just a minute. I'm bringing the suit back tomorrow. It's a coffee stain. A coffee stain? No doubt about it. Did you stop off on the way home for a cup of coffee, maybe? No, no. Are you sure? The stain must have been in the suit when I bought it. That may be. Anyway, we'll take it out. Yeah, well, look, uh, look, Mr. Plotz, it's, uh... It's just that when I buy a brand new suit, I... Think no more about it. It's a very light stain. Yeah, well, do the best you can, huh? Hmm. This is funny. What's funny? It's... An old stain. Old? How can it be an old stain? It's a new suit. See how the stain has set and faded? Why, it just looks like a stain to me. It's black coffee. Also has picked up over the years. Other... Over the years? But it's a new suit. The suit is new. The stain is old. Well, how, how can that be? I don't know. I'll take out the stain. I'll remove it. You'll never know a stain even exists. Well, well, how did it get there? That must remain a mystery. Well, yeah, but... but Life is so full of mysteries. Will one more hurt anybody? Well, now, look, I'm entitled to know how my new... Believe me, I would tell you. Well, are you satisfied? Yes. I'm satisfied. I left the suit at the store. If I'd been feeling peculiar before, it was nothing, nothing at all to the way I was feeling now. Something was happening. Something was taking place. And it was inside my mind. For the life of me, I couldn't understand what it was. When I got home, I got the scare of my life the minute I saw Emma. Emma! Emma! What is it? Jack, what is it? What, your... Your hair. What did you do to your hair? My... My hair? Nothing. What would I do to my hair? Well, it, it, it's gray. Your hair is, is gray. And your, and your face... What are you talking about? Well, just look, look. Look in the mirror. Here, come over. Come over here. Zach, what's the matter with you? There is nothing different about my hair. Yeah, but just before... And and my face? What's different about my face? I don't know. What made you say my hair was gray? Well, well, for a minute, it, it looked... 
Uh, maybe, maybe it was the way the light struck it. The light? Yeah, the light, the light. It can play tricks on your eyes. Back. Are you all right? Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm all right. I think you're working too hard. You, you better see a doctor. You're working too hard. You better see a doctor. How often do wives say that? If you had a dollar for each time, you'd be rich beyond all dreams. But even though you'd be fabulously wealthy, you'd still be curious to know what was going to happen in Act Two. Well, join the rest of us here in just a few minutes. We're dealing here with a set of circumstances, a juxtaposition, as it were, of the old and the new. We have a coin from a date that is still in the future. We have a stain that is years old on a suit that is brand new. Ordinarily, we could say that the person to whom it is all happening is, uh, well, uh, hallucinating. But the problem is, he has witnesses. You can get an attack of fever, but what you cannot do is live at fever pitch indefinitely. Okay, the coin from 1986, the stain on the suit. Mysterious, it's puzzling, it's even frustrating, but life has to go on. So the weeks went by, the months, maybe even a year. I forgot all about the coin. And as far as the suit was concerned, well, by now it was a suit that I wore without thinking about it. And then one day... Sir? Yeah. Aren't you home early? Yeah, I guess so. Anything happened at the office today? Yeah. I got fired. Oh, that's not... What? What did you say? I got fired. Well, but out of a clear blue sky. Out of a clear blue sky. What, what did you do? I didn't do a thing. But you must have done something. No, I arrived at the office, hung up my hat and coat. Well, Zach, tell me what happened. And Mr. Destiny called me into his office. What did he say? He said, you're fired. But without any reason. And he said, I'm fired, too, if it'll make you feel any better. But why was he fired? We're all fired, every last but one of us. Why? Them. Well, you can't fire everybody in the company. There is no longer a company. What do you mean? There's no longer... It's finished, ended, over, and done with. Will you please make sense? Does any of it make sense? I gave this company nine years of my life. Nine of my best years. I thought I was building a future. I thought I had some place to go. And where was it? The scrappy. But what happened... Did you ever hear of the Aurora Group? No. The Aurora Group. You never heard of it? It never heard of you either. And yet it has altered the entire course of your life. You still didn't tell me what happened. Somewhere in Chicago, Illinois, a thousand miles from here, there's a, a group of men, maybe women too, and they play Monopoly. Only it's with real money and for real business. And they say, let's buy Taylor and Cornwell. Well, that's your corporation? And then they say, Taylor and Cornwell have a marketing division called NOLA Research. Let's get rid of it. But why? Look. Here, here. Here. Shh. Right here. On this table is a fly. Yes. Shh. Don't make a sound. You'll frighten them. Now, just let me roll up this newspaper. Shh. 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 Now, watch this. There. I got him, you see? Look, back. We, we were talking about something important. You don't understand it. This fly, he was minding his own business, right? He was doing what he always does. And in that last split second when he felt that awful rush of wind, he knew he was going to be killed. Killed before he could even make a move to save himself. Did he know why he was going to be killed? Now, you can say he was killed because he was a pest. Zach, I don't know what to say to all this. But the fly, he doesn't know he's a pest. You haven't answered my question. Oh, yes, I think I have. The Aurora Group got rid of NOLA marketing for the same reason I slapped the fly. It's a pest, okay? But to do a thing like that... Do you think business operates on generosity and kindness, consideration for other people? No. Every eye turns to the bottom line, the almighty dollar, the basic buck. Nine years. In nine years, I never missed a day. First to arrive, last to leave. You can get another job. Is that how you dismiss my nine years? Back, life goes on. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny you should put it that way. Now, what did I say? Uh, that's... 
how you talk after a funeral about somebody who died. It's as if I died. But, but why don't we just go out tonight? Have dinner, see a show, go dance. Oh, sure, sure. Look at what we've got to celebrate. Oh, Doc, you're only 34 years old. It isn't the end of the world. You get another job. You keep saying but that. It's true. You know what I said just before? Well, maybe I... I did just get back from a funeral. Zach, I think we'd just better stop this kind of talk. A part of me died, and a part of me died with Nola marketing. The worst thing a wife can say at a time like this is, I told you so. Now, why say it? Because maybe it'll teach you a lesson. I always said you, you just can't give so much of yourself to your work. Oh, yeah, yeah, you said it, and I'll give you full credit. And believe me, it'll never happen again. From now on, I'm strictly a nine-to-five guy. I could tell you more about how things went that day, but why? I was feeling sorry for myself, and I was right. Well, but how much do you want to hear about other people's troubles? Besides, I haven't even gotten to the real troubles yet. I found another job after a while. It didn't pay as much as my old one. But as Mr. Stebbins said when he hired me... Your salary around here will depend on what you can show us, Mr. Everhart. Advancement is quick and the money keeps up with it. Provided a man has got the stuff. Sure. I'd heard that before. Well, Mr. Stebbins, for me, you get just what you pay for and not another penny's worth more. Hi, what'll it be? Uh, tea. Okay, I'll pour you a cup of coffee. Wait a minute. I said tea. Uh, you're kidding. Did, did you say tea? Yeah, that's what I said. You know what that proves? It proves we just don't listen. I mean, the average person comes in here wants coffee, so I try to beat him to the punch. Oh, here, let me spill that no, out. No, 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 no. It's all right. Uh, yeah, maybe I will have coffee today. Oh, look, you don't have to no, have coffee. No, once every ten years, I guess I can enjoy a cup of No, coffee. no, let me take it from you. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, did you get any of that on you? No, 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 it's all right. Um, look, whenever we spill anything in this place, the boss says to tell the customer... The dry cleaning is on us. No, it's okay. It's uh, not very much of a stain. It'll come out. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I never saw you in here before. You work in the building? Yeah, I uh, started yesterday. Oh, well, don't be a stranger. Her name was Stella. She had that real dark, jet black hair. Black hair and black eyes. I mean, shiny, sparkling black eyes. Altogether, she was something to look at. So I looked at her. And I can honestly say it was the first time in the nine years I was married that I ever looked at another girl. I mean, looked. And I could tell she liked me, too. But I wasn't the kind who fools around. That kind of thing leads into more trouble than you can handle. Anyhow, that's what I told myself at the beginning. Meanwhile, I was getting settled in on the new job. Zach. Yes, Mr. Stebbins. Sit down. The Anderson contract. You remember it? Yes, sir. And you checked it out? I did. Thoroughly? I pride myself that I do my work thoroughly, Mr. Stebbins. The figure was $130,000. Do you remember? Yes. Didn't it strike you that a hundred thirty was rather low for all the services we would have to provide? Yes, sir, very low. And why didn't you say so? Well, it wasn't my job, Mr. Stebbins. Mm. I was required only to examine the basic research elements and requirements. I, I was not asked to examine the budget. But surely it would go without saying that budgetary considerations would come into it. Well, the proposal was prepared by my immediate superior, George Wood. That was his figure. It may have been part of a strategic plan of his own. And I wasn't going to get into a battle with him over it. We don't battle with each other in this outfit. We work together. Yes, sir. As it happens, the 130 was a typographical error. It should have been 230. Now, in the future, Zach, don't be afraid to be independent. Or aren't you that type of guy? I used to be that type of guy, Mr. Stebbins. But I've learned... 
Sure, I could have taken that proposal home and burned hours of midnight oil over it. I could have turned it into a real money maker for this company, but why? So it could be taken over by the Aurora Group, and I'd be out in the cold again? You know the old saying, Mr. Stebbins, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Zach. What is it? Well, it's stew, if you must know. It's about all we can afford every night for supper. And the meat in it gets smaller and smaller and less and less. You've simply got to earn more money. Now, look, Emma, I have no illusions about my job. They promised me the moon when I took it. Those companies, they're all alike. Zach, maybe it's you. Me? What's the matter with me? Well, you look as if you don't care anymore. Well, how can you say that? Your appearance used to be so neat, so orderly. Now you wear the same suit all the time. It's even got a stain on it. Now, what difference does it make? Well, I'll have to go out and get a job. Go ahead. I'm not really trained to do anything. All I studied in school was art. Look, I don't feel too good. I think I'll lie down and take a nap. Hi. How are you, Stella? Oh, me? I'm great. Oh, what's the matter, Zach? Oh, uh, it's a long story. Well, I got all day. I guess it has a real corny, cliche beginning. Oh, like... Once upon a time? No, no, more like uh, my wife doesn't understand me. Oh, I hear those stories all the time. Well, then I won't bother you with mine. Oh, no, to yours? I'd listen. Oh. Uh, I, um, get off at five, so maybe we could go somewhere. You have to understand, I had to talk to somebody. I wasn't out for it. Love or sex or any of the rest of that. That came later. Just to be with a girl who didn't keep nagging at me, who was. who just was quiet and soft and understanding, especially understanding. Who really knew what I was talking about when I mentioned the Aurora group. Oh, yes, I know. My aunt, my father's sister, she's very old country, very superstitious. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't mean she's wrong. Now, the Aurora group. Is Mephistoph, the huh? angel of evil. The angel of evil. Any man who wishes to succeed challenges him. And therefore, that person must be struck down. As you were. Oh. You know something? I believe you. Oh, so do I. But we'd better not tell anybody. They'd think we're crazy. They're crazy. Crazy to think they can beat what? What's his name? Mephistoph. Mephistoph. But if you don't bother him, he won't bother you. You may ask if that's how things had progressed between Stella and me. Why didn't I get a divorce? Well, religiously, it was impossible. Emma didn't believe in it, and neither did Stella's husband. He was a merchant sailor, and he was away for months at a time. But Emma was around. Actually, she was doing very well. She had gotten herself a job with a large, important art and antiques gallery. She was doing very well. I got a raise. Oh, really? Mr. Fenris says they've had eyes on me, and I can go places. Well, look out. You don't irritate Mephistoph. Who? Skip it. Are you still wearing that same suit? Well, I can't afford another one. Well, I'm making more money now. No, thank you. Why don't you ask for a raise? If I do, they'll fire me. I'm stuck away in a neat little cubby hole. Well, then get another job. It's the same thing everywhere. I don't want to start that thing all over again. Besides, I have work to do. Oh, bringing work home? I see you didn't learn. Look at this. Beautiful. All right, what's it supposed to be? What does it look like? Well, it looks like a dagger. It's a fine damascened Florentine dagger. Here, you can read the information. On the tag. I brought it home because there's some spots to be cleaned. But what... What kind of information is this? Well, read the tag. It has all the history. Well, it says on this tag, Exhibit A. Exhibit A. Let's see. That's how the various things are marked for a trial. Exhibit A, Exhibit B, and so on. Exhibit A is usually the murder weapon. Murder weapon? What murder? What murder? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? 
Well, I'm thinking we'd all better be here for Act Three in just a few minutes. We are looking at a beautifully damascened Florentine dagger, the work of an outstanding Renaissance craftsman. Emma Eberhardt, who works for a large art and antiques gallery, has brought it home to be cleaned. Zachary Eberhardt looks at the tag attached to the dagger, and instead of reading the history of the weapon, all he sees is a notation that says, Exhibit A. What do you mean, Exhibit A? I typed that tag myself. Well, Emma, read it. It says Exhibit A. It says nothing of the sort. Look, 16th century dagger, believed to be the work of Casarello. But Emma, when I looked at that tag just before, it distinctly said Exhibit A. It must have been your imagination. No, no, it was printed in big letters. So where is it now? I don't know. I don't know, but it was there. Well, then what happened to it? Why should you see something like that? Now, don't cross-examine. Oh, why don't you see a doctor? Look, I'm not a nut. Where are you going? Out. What's your name? Whose name? Whoever it is you're going to see. I'm just going for a walk. Why don't you see Dr. Salmon? What for? You're coming apart. I'm all right. Oh, that. It's been five years since you lost that job with Nola. You mean since that Aurora group destroyed Nola? Business is business. You've got to get hold of yourself. Look, what happened to that coin? What coin? Don't you remember? Five years ago, you found a quarter. It was dated 1986. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, 1986 is still years away. What did you do with it? Well, I, I, uh, I, I spent it. You spent it? Yeah, I dropped it in a slot somewhere. But Sarah... It wasn't worth anything. I took it into a coin expert. Then it's gone. Yes, it's gone. Oh, Zach, somehow I feel that everything that's happened to you since then is tied up somehow with that coffin. What happened to me was I got sandbagged by the Aurora group. That's what happened to me. Well, I made an appointment for you with Dr. Salmon. Please, Zach. Please keep it. <laughs> Let's straighten this whole business out at the start, Doctor. I don't believe in this entire psychiatry thing. I think it's a waste of time. Why did you come? Well, otherwise, my wife would have made me miserable. Your wife told me your problem. Yeah, I'll bet she did. She said you had suffered a terrible disappointment. Oh, really? You had worked wholeheartedly for a certain company that was suddenly taken over by some conglomerate, and that was the end of it. Is that true? Well, that part of it is true. And since then, you've gone completely to pieces. No, no, I'm just playing it smart, not giving anybody else a chance to use me and throw me away. But don't you think... Don't I think what? That I ought to pull myself together and make a fresh start and... No, look, I, I get that lecture from her. Do I have to get it from you, too? I won't lecture you at all. I would merely say you must choose. Choose between a vigorous life and a living death. Mr. Everhart. Mr. Everhart. Why... Why are you looking at me like that? Why was I looking at him like that? When I first walked into the office, he had a mustache. And now... He had a beard. And he looked a great deal older. And we weren't in the office at all. We weren't in the office at all. Dr. Salmon... You have seen the defendant in the past as a patient. That is correct. And what was your impression? A rightly disturbed person. In what way? To be as brief as possible, there are those people who simply cannot cope with the pressures of society. When they meet with severe disappointment or defeat, it becomes a psychological blow from which they never recover. But why should this have made the defendant kill his wife? Dr. Salmon? Dr. Salmon? Mr. Eberhardt. Mr. Eberhardt. Uh, what? You seem to be in another world. Dr. Salmon, do you intend to grow a beard? Yes. How did you know? Well, you should. Because you look very good. Mr. Eberhardt, I'm trying to, to help you. No, no, that can't be done. Why? I just saw it, so... So no one can help me. What did you just see? The future. <laughs> well, how can a person see Now, the... don't waste time with that. I've seen it. I just realized I've... 
been saying it all along. What you're saying is an impossibility. No, I'm sure. But that doesn't mean it can't be done. I see the future. It's revealed to me in, in, in little flashes, tiny clues. Here, look, I, I get a coin, a 25-cent piece with a date far in the future. I get a brand-new suit that has a stain on it. A stain that it's not supposed to pick up until years later. I see a dagger with the words Exhibit A on it. I see a flash of my wife with white hair. I see you with a beard testifying at a murder trial. My trial. Your trial? Yes, I can see myself. The prisoner in the dock. Well? Well, obviously. Hallucinations. That's what you were going to say, huh? Yes. And that's how you intend to help me, by trying to prove it's all in my imagination? And where else can it be? Well, that's great for you. You want to help me on your terms, help me on mine. I'm headed for a future where I murder my wife and stand trial. Can you stop that future? Why do you want to murder your wife? I don't, I don't. Sure, you must have a reason. No, 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 no. Another, another woman? No, I, I can't marry her anyway, which means Emma isn't in the way. But doesn't Emma object? No, no. Emma is holding hands with this... Fenris guy at the gallery. Maybe you'd want to kill her for that. No, no, I don't care. So that you much. envy her success. She's rising in the world. She's going to be made manager at the gallery. Well, that doesn't mean a thing to And me. yet you insist you're going to kill no, her. No, I don't insist on anything. All I know is what I saw in the future. What do you think you saw in the future? Oh, talk to have it your way. All I know is I'm going to kill her. I haven't the faintest idea why. Well, then, let me say that I can't imagine why. It goes against my entire grain. I'm not a killer, but I'm going to do it. And there's no way to stop it. I've seen the future. I decided to get out of here. How could I kill Emma if I wasn't around? And so, I decided to drop out. Just disappear. And I did. There was no point in saying goodbye to Emma, who probably wouldn't even notice it. And I didn't feel strong enough to say goodbye to Stella. So the next morning, I just got on the bus, and I kept riding. I went from town to town, from job to job. Things went from bad to worse. I just couldn't get set anywhere. And that went on for almost six or seven years. Not that I was keeping track, but one day... I looked at a calendar, and it was July 1986, and I knew I was going home to where she was. I just couldn't fight it anymore. I didn't even know what I was fighting, and I had absolutely no desire to kill her. Well, what would be, would be. Zach! Hello, Stella. Oh, Zach. Zach, what's happened to oh, you? Nothing. Oh, you look so... Seedy. Well, why did you disappear? Oh, well, that's a long story. But you won't do it again. Oh, honey, you'll stay with me. If you'll have me. Oh, Zach. Darling, I never loved anyone but you. Yeah, I can't understand. What? I have absolutely no reason in the world to want to kill her. Oh, don't talk about killing. And yet... If you, if you listen to the sound... Well, don't listen to anybody. You know, like, like Einstein. You see, I studied about this, Stella. Do you, you know the future has already happened? Oh, honey, what you need is a lot of sleep. Come on, how can the future have already happened? Now, I, Einstein's theory says the past, present, and future are all intermingled. Oh, honey. Honey, you don't want to bother your head with that. Believe me. Look, look, I'll tell you what. I'll close early. It's four now. Let's see. Give it another 15 minutes. I I own it now. Oh, we'll do just great. Now, look, you drink this nice hot cup of tea, and I'll have to check out the register and read the paper, huh? Yeah, all right. There's news about your wife in it. Emma? Yeah, yeah, section two. Her picture and everything. She's become pretty big since you've been gone. Well, that's the way she she wants it. Uh, section two where? Oh, bottom of the page. You see your picture? I didn't read the story. What does it say? Oh, uh. Mrs. Emma Eberhardt, managing director of the Allenby Galleries. Managing director? Oh, that isn't bad. Has just been named a vice president and member of the board of the parent company, the Aurora Group. 
Mrs. Eberhardt is the first woman to become a top executive of this vast conglomerate. The Aurora Group. The Aurora Group. That's what? Mephistoph. Who? Well, you should know Mephistoph. Yes. She is a member of Mephistoph, the Aurora Group. She has become one with those who destroyed me. Oh, Zach, forget it. Now, I wonder... I wonder if she's home. I'm going to call her. I want to congratulate her. I, oh, I don't have any money. Let me have a quarter. Zach, look, what... Just what give me a just... quarter, huh? Oh, sure, Zach. Here. Thanks, thank you. Hey, that, that's a nice... Brand new, shiny, 1986. 1986 quarter. Oh, my Lord. My good Lord. She isn't home. Here's the quarter. That's why. I, that's that's why I needed the quarter. Zack, where are you going? I knew where I was going. To the gallery. To the gallery that was owned by the Aurora Group. The Aurora Group, which slowly but surely was taking over everything and everybody. Zack, what are you doing here? Where have you been? I tried. I tried to stay away because I didn't want to kill you. That... But you became one of them. You're a member of the Aurora Club. I'll have to ask you to leave. Here, here, here it is on this tabletop, this beautifully damascened Florentine dagger. Do you see? See how it was ordained? How it was meant to be? Zach, what are you doing? Help! Nothing, nothing can help you. No one. Help! You joined them. You became a part of them. I always help! wanted to kill them, and I can, I can do it by killing you. Your, your face. It's the face of Mephisto. Oh. And now, and now, Mephisto is dead. I killed her. I killed the Aurora Group. Well, he didn't. Not really. The Aurora Group is still around, bigger, richer than ever. But just as every man has his price, every man can have his motive. And if you think you're not the type who could kill, well, it all depends on the game and the stakes, doesn't it? More about the game in just a few minutes. that society is also responsible for our crimes. And there's a considerable body of evidence to prove it. After all, we insist on winner-take-everything. We make it intolerable to be a loser. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Ann Williams, Bryna Rayburn, Joe DeSantis, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>